Make my joy complete. Be of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord, and of one mind. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility regard others as better than yourselves. Let each of you look not to your own interests, but to the interests of others. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus. I think Garvin Ministries that came about, as I was saying, to to help me to need downtown that wasn't being necessarily met, and not that we've completely solved it, but certainly it's, it's uh, grown a lot in the last number of years in terms of the facilities that, uh, that are now there uh, and and things that have evolved. But the same, I guess some of the same steady mainline churches that were originally part of that group are still part of that group, and, and uh, thankfully for us and in Trinity, we've always been a pretty hard core supporter of, of everything that's been done there. Uh, and so, uh, you know, we now have a new, a much newer facility and that's now expanded for social services over there. I think it's amazing the, the amount of teamwork that the whole feeding um, at the Urban Cafe actually has engendered. Because year after year, I don't even have to call the 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 volunteer coordinator for the whole organization because I just know that every other third third Monday will be there to uh, to provide the meal and I think when you think about how many nights there are in a year most of the groups who who are sponsors maybe work once a month or once every couple of months so that requires a lot of different groups to be supportive and and when we tried to find more nights to serve last year there were only like four nights between January, I mean, between June mm-hmm. and December that it weren't already committed. So mm-hmm. I think that really speaks well for the wide variety and dedication of the, of the teams that do put those meals on. And we've been serving in the neighborhood of 230 to 50 to 60 people every, every time we serve. I think the high has been over 300 at one point, yeah, one serving or thereabout. So uh, there's a, a certainly an established need and, and I'm amazed that, uh, as we we actually serve during the during those evenings, that so many of the people who we would say we're in need were would make a point to tell us who were serving uh, how grateful they were that we were there. But they they have a, a good number of, of volunteers who are people themselves who volunteer in the kitchen to clean to to uh, do the glasses and and they're, they're just constantly. And then when we finish up. They jump right in, so you can just leave it. We'll wrap it up and, and label it. Who are these volunteers? Where are they from? They're, right. they're homeless they're people, residents. too, they're, they're, they're who residents. have earned, uh, I guess, their well, ability to work. Well, some of them are in the, in the recovery programs. In the recovery some programs, them, so. and they actually help in the kitchen doing all the cleaning and stuff. And then we, once we leave, they say, leave it on the counter. We'll cover it up. We'll mark it and date it and put it in the coolers and whatever. So um, it, it's amazing to me how, how the process is not only from the volunteers, but uh, but the, uh, those others that are part of that community who who do it, and I guess um, one of the things that drives me is I, I guess we all think uh, of our many blessings that we have, but uh, you know I guess we could be only a few steps away from the same plight. The date I can't tell you, but uh, we had about an assistant minister here at Trinity who got the whole thing started when she left uh, and I don't know when that was either she asked that I take over and make sure it continues because she didn't want all that work that she had done not to continue so that's what I did and I I did it up until let's see about three years ago and uh, and then I made sure that whoever took it over would be continuing as well yeah, it really started with a, a pastor who was here when we came in 1970, Bill Quick. And he worked with the uh, four downtown churches because the city was blighted and people were running away and abandoning downtown. And so First Baptist, Trinity Methodist, St. Philip's, and First Press joined together and, and started a program. And then it eventually revolved uh, or evolved into what Jane's talking about with the um, 
first the the meals were prepared here, mm-hmm. and we That's would right, load them up and <laughs> carry yeah. them over. Yeah. And then it grew enough, and the uh, demand was great enough, and we had enough volunteers. It was just easier, and they had had evolved enough in urban ministries that uh, they could accommodate us. So uh, we went over there, and uh, we've been doing it for a long time. And every time we do an urban ministry feeding, I guess you call it, um, you know, somebody from Trinity is asked to uh, say the table grace, and so we pray, and sometimes we get amens, and sometimes we get (laughs) spontaneous singing. And uh, they they like the food we bring because we don't bring just spaghetti and meatballs. <laughs> we bring good stuff, so uh, we're a favorite. And and they've come to recognize us as the high steeple church. And occasionally people come, and it's it's helped with the pancakes for the people. But that uh, that goes back a long way with a lot of struggles with uh, downtown Durham over the years. And uh, Trinity has been very faithful, not only in doing it, but in, in getting volunteers to, uh, to do it as well. 